Well, Dodger fans, we have some terrible news coming out of the team and manager Dave Roberts as there's been an injury and it's not looking good. Welcome back to Clem Hawks. I'm Gillis TV. And if you're new to the channel, like anything MLB related news, trades, rumors, whatever there is, actually a live stream coming up after this of the Jays. And I'm not too sure who they're playing, but we'll do that game here after this video. If you're into that stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button as we are going for 5,000 subscribers. Now let's get into it. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts announced this morning that infielder Gavin Lux suffered a torn ACL in his right knee during yesterday's Cactus League game and will miss the entire 2023 season. Lux also sustained damage to his right knee's LCL. He'll undergo surgery on March 7th. Lux, who is 25, was slated to step into the spotlight at the Dodgers' primarily shortstop following free agent departures of Corey Seager following the 2021 season and, of course, Trey Turner this past season. However, while advancing from second to third on a grounder in yesterday's game, Lux altered his course a bit to avoid a throw across the diamond. In doing so, the infielder's knee buckled and he immediately tumbled to the ground in pain. Lux was unable to put any weight on his leg and was carted off the field. While Lux now out for the season, the Dodgers' January reacquisition of infielder Miguel Rojas now becomes a far more pivotal pickup. Rojas, who spent the past half decade as the Marlins' primary shortstop after being traded from the Dodgers to Miami, is a light hitter but grades out as one of the best defensive shortstops in the game he'd be ticketed for a utility role but will now step up as an everyday shortstop in Lux's absence Roberts also added that Swiss Army knife Chris Taylor could get some reps in the infield as well and Mucky Betts could see some extra work at second base for the Dodgers too this is all via Jack Harris of LA Times the 2022 season saw Lux take the field for a career-high 129 games and hit a 276 average in a career-high 471 plate appearances. That was a solid production of 13% better than average per WRC+, but also bears mention that a woeful cold streak in September-October weighed down Lux's end-of-season numbers. Lux was slowed by a neck and upper back soreness late in the year, receiving a cortisone injection and missing about two weeks of action while mending the injury. Based on the way his fi season finished out, it doesn't seem like the injection and downtime had their intended effect. Though through September 1st, Lux was slashing a far more robust 293 average in 418 play appearances during the season's Five months, he walked at a 11% clip and fanned at a lower than average 18.9% rate upon returning on September 17th. However, Lux tallied 53 more plate appearances and just hit a buck 54 with an alarming 30.2 strikeout rate and a 1.9% walk rate. Between that five month run to open up the 2022 season, a strong cave. To base on Ball's profile, sharp defensive grades at second base, and Lux's pedigree as a former first-round pick and universally landed top prospect at the 2023 breakout seemed like a reality possibility. That's no longer the case, and it's a gut punch for both the Dodgers and for Lux, as he will spend the year on the injured list, gaining MLB service time along the way, and inching closer to free agency at the conclusion of the 2026 season. So this is a huge loss for the Dodgers, who they had this guy in Lux, who they didn't need Trey Turner anymore. They didn't need Corey Seager anymore. They knew this guy was coming up. He's going to be the next best thing. He's going to be our shortstop for a long time. And now that kind of foils the plans, which... Good thing they brought in the utility man in Rojas, who can do a lot of things defensively. The bat's not there, though. Are they going to try and figure out, hey, we're going to go and try and get 
uh, another shortstop somewhere who has batting and they can just rotate in and out for games. That will be one to watch for the upcoming spring training and see if they do something before the regular season starts, which is just about a month away or so here to start it. Rojas figures to be a downgrade with the bat on the heels of a 236 showing in 2022. While he didn't post much more solid 277 line for the 20 from 2019 to 2021, 1,208 plate appearances. Rojas just turned 34 and has been a quality of contact degrade considerably over the past couple seasons. Sorry, I've got a text on top of my screen there. I was reading that while reading this. However, while he doesn't have the offensive upside of Lux, Rojas should provide the Dodgers with a lights-out glove work at the position. He piled up a gaudy 15 defensive runs saved at shortstop in 2022 and dating back to 2017 he has been credited with 27 defensive run saves and 19 outs above average is more in more than 4800 innings even if rojas gives the dodgers a more than passable replacement option for shortstop luxury's injury still thins out the organization's infield depth in a meaningful way particularly with top prospect and projected regular second baseman Miguel Vargas also dealing with a hairline fracture in his pinky finger. While there's no indication Vargas is expected to miss a substantial time with the injury, he's playing in the Cactus League games but not swinging during his plate appearances at the moment. Subtracting Lux from the roster likely pushes depth option such as Yanni Hernandez up from AAA. The outfield depth is also impacted at any time Taylor spends in the infield, cuts into his availability elsewhere or on the diamond. His feasible, it's feasible that the Dodgers could look to add some infield depth through options on the free agent market. At this point, extremely, it's extremely limited. Veterans like Jose Iglesias, Jonathan Villar, Didi Gregorius, and Aldrelton Simmons remain unsigned, but the latter three in particular have had their share of recent struggles. The Dodgers are no strangers to making small-scale trades and adding depth via waivers, of course, and this injury gives them the freedom to accommodate a new acquisition on the 40-man roster by shifting Lux to the 60-day IL. So like I said, they're going to have to do something if they don't think Rojas can do it with the bat. Go find a bat elsewhere. But that's it for me today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm on out of here.